the, the course is very historic and obviously a fabulous course. <laughs> How did that factor in in terms of either the play or your recruiting? Is that something that was important? Well, it's really a great recruiting tool. And now it's a great recruiting tool. Plus, you know, facilities are really, through Conrad's direction, donors have really improved. I think it's marvelous now. But it was a, it was a huge, huge thing. I mean, to, just Stanford itself was a huge recruiting tool. And then you got this wonderful golf course. And, uh, we gradually developed the practice facilities down at the range, and I got together with Caroline, and we put a lot of money and all that stuff down there so that the kids could actually practice what they needed to practice with the right kind of golf balls and, and all that sort of stuff. So that it was uh, just a 100% positive situation all the way around. You know? uh, <clears throat> we, I, I have no idea about the percentages, but I'm sure that we got most of the guys that we were after. And, uh, and the guys that didn't show up here were guys that were not uh, that active uh, academically. And so they made the bad choice. Because no kid should go up to school, even try to go up to school, where he's not going to be uh, pretty well settled in academically. Because then life gets tough. Uh, you spend a lot of time trying to make the travel squad, and, uh, and your academic work is very difficult, and it becomes a big, uh, you know, kind of a not a good situation. I remember one year, I do have a little bit of history, one year the lowest high school GPA on our 12-man squad was 3.86. Hmm. So here we had these guys and uh, it was just uh, you know, a matter of having great kids to be around. And, I mean, if they learned as much from me as I learned from them, I, it was a positive situation all the way around. Coach, you turned a program that was a good program average program in short order into a great program and you were named National Coach of the Year twice. Well, Not too long after you arrived, that's a remarkable uh, change. Uh, what were the keys to that transition? Well, probably the first key was Christian Savalier, who went to Robert Louis Stevenson School, where I'd been the director of athletics for a long time. I was not there when he was there, but it was a, it was a natural for us very bright kid, a great player, tough kid. So tough that a lot of other college players really didn't enjoy playing with him. But he came, and he hit the headlines for us. I mean, I, as I remember, he won the Pac-10 championship in his freshman year. Mm -hmm. And uh, that hit the headlines, and then uh, and, uh, that led us into uh, Nota Begay and Casey Martin in one year. Mm. Now, if you get Casey Martin in your lifetime, that's wonderful. And you get note of a game in your lifetime. That's another. I yeah. to get them both in the and same. And how did that happen? Was it just pure luck? Or? Pure, sure. They were both both great students, uh, motivated to come here to school. Note of a gay, interesting young fellow from Albuquerque uh, with not much of an elementary academic background, but got himself into Albuquerque Academy, one of the great secondary schools in the country. And did well academically there. His uh, <clears throat> senior year in high school, he was all first team all state in soccer, first team all state in basketball, and first team all American in golf. So he was a fantastic oh. athlete, fiery guy. Mm -hmm. You know, and then Casey comes in, not quite as good a player, but with all, all the other attributes of the humanity and academics and all that kind of stuff. So they that really started it off. Was his leg a problem even then? Oh, yeah. I mean, that, this was something that he... I can had. remember, I will not name the coach, but I can remember uh, down at the uh, in San Diego Torrey Pines, put a world junior down there, and I'm following Casey around one day. And one of the other coaches came up to me and said, Wally, how come you're recruiting Casey? And I said, well, because the coach said, you know, I'd probably never play in college with that leg. I said, I, I didn't. I would hope he's going to play, but I didn't care whether he played or not. I wanted him here at Stanford. And it turned out to be a, a blessing. I remember Casey's father came one time and said, look at, the, look at the chance that Coach Goodwin took by recruiting my son. I said, I didn't take any chances at all. I knew exactly what was going to happen. Because in golf, you've got to have all different kinds of guys. 
And if everybody on your golf team comes from the same city or whatever, it's, it's just going to be a bunch of guys duking it out. But if you get guys from all over the world and all different nationalities and backgrounds, and they feed off each other. Like, that's the way that team turned out. Remarkable. Remarkable group of guys. And then along comes Tiger. Yeah, along came Tiger. And of course, you know the history on that one. That <clears throat> Noda and all those guys, uh, everybody redshirted their third year. The only guy that I kept out was Stevie Bird because he had to catch up. And so Brad Lyon and all those guys all redshirted because they all wanted to be here to play a year with Tiger. And so uh, the year before Tiger gets here, we went down to the uh, to uh, Dallas for the preview where we finished last. Now this is the year before Tiger got here. Dead last. But we were the only team there to break par one day, the last day. And when I let those guys on that team know that about three times every week. <laughs> Don't forget, we were the only team that broke par. And I uh, yes. get down there and win the national championship in that spring. So they won it before Tiger gets here. Now, everybody's got visions of way beyond a national championship, unbelievable eternal glory. We've got all these guys coming back, and now Tiger's here in school. And wouldn't you know, we go up to Ohio State and uh, get uh, Nick by uh, <coughs> Oklahoma State up there. They tied us, or we tied them, but they actually tied us. And then we got beaten uh, by one shot in the overtime. The preview of that fall, we were in Albuquerque of that year. And uh, we were out for dinner one night. With Tiger, right? With Tiger. And we were out for dinner one night at, uh, which was a highly recommended restaurant, not too far from the hotel where we were staying. I uh, had a great dinner. And I get up the next morning, check in the, uh, with everybody by the phone. And coach, you got to understand, Casey and Tiger, they don't think they can play today. What's the problem? Well, they've been sick all night. I said, oh, they do it. You know, just because we won the national championship the year before is, is nothing in that situation where we were. So I'm down there in their room, and it, it, was, it was really difficult. And Casey said, Coach, I cannot do it. I haven't got the strength to make it. Tiger said, well, I'll give it a try, Coach. And so he did, laying around, dry heaving all. I mean, he was a sick kid. And sick as he was, he shot 72. So we got through the, uh, the West region and made it to the national championship. Nobody shot in the 60s at the national championship. And we were shooting in the 60s all day. There was always somebody in the 60s. And uh, <clears throat> we got, as I said, we got tied by Oklahoma State. And they beat us in a, in a swimming pool event. It was so, it was raining so hard. There was so much water all over the golf course. Uh, you couldn't find any way to possibly improve the situation that you were in. There wasn't dry ground anywhere to go take your ball to. And, uh, difficult situation.